Greetings and salutations, everyone. It's time for another episode of Viewport Relay, a bi weekly podcast where the Viewport team looks at the latest news in the gaming industry. As always, I'm your host, Albert Corson, joined by Tristan Jung. Hello. And Alex Nestor. Hey! I, uh, I have a confession to make. Yes, Albert, what would you like to tell us? I don't have a, a catchy opening, or a pun, or a... I thought I thought you always did like here. Let me try. Uh, I'll I'll do it for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's eighty one plus one? Eighty two. Episode eighty two. <laughs> Welcome to episode eighty two. Boom. We got it. We're in. We're back. We are uncanceled. Were we ever canceled? I don't think so. <laughs> what have you been playing? What have you guys been playing? That's our familiar oh. place. Woo, it's classic. here, Tristan. You asked for it. It's here. Are we doing the past two weeks or the past month? You know, you forgot some... No, that's a long time. But you forgot some stuff last time. So, if I you didn't forget it, some stuff. If, we just didn't it, do it Yeah, last we just time. did not do the segment. Albert trying to throw it on I us swear, this time. I swear we did. No, no you, we did no, not. Because no, I brought it up afterwards. I was like, hey, I want to talk about an inscription. And, and you were like, I want to play it first before we talk about it. No, I swear we did it last time. We did not. I, we okay. Pull Check up the, the recordings. Tape. You have I, the literal recording. I, I I am too zero IQ to come up with something else to start. What <laughs> What did we start the no, last no, no. episode you, you, with? You, you said what do you want to play or something like that? That's yeah, what we the did last time. We talked about what we wanted oh. to play. <laughs> Coming up, I'm a great host. Yep, I like to mix it up. You know, I was just testing you guys. That's this Tristan. You got one point. Good job. Mm-hmm. You won today's game. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, man. <laughs> Alex, Three points? you also got a point. Yes. All uh, right. But there's only two points to give, so it's a tie. Alex mm-hmm. and I are high-fiving each other. Yep. Get I'm a going for a high whoosh, score. You know, like a whoosh, one of those sound effects. Put that, oh. oh, oh, oh that's me that? clapping my, that's me oh, clapping my, my hands. That was a clap. It, looks, it looked like a, it sounded like an Indiana Jones whip. Yeah. Right. I, I, Speaking I of Indiana Jones... Who wants to play that game? Oh, we're not going there. We're not going there. We're not going there. I forgot about it, honestly. It's made okay. by Todd Howard. How can you forget? Wait, it's Todd. Yeah. I thought it was Insomniac. No, it's a Bethesda game. Oh, boy. I don't know if it's him doing it. Either way, what have you been playing past month? Slow news segment other than Mr. Kodak. So, you know. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll spend some time at the start. And Tristan, elaborate. you probably got a lot, so hit us off on the first uh, couple. That you first got. couple. Okay, I played... Um, actually, Albert played this too. Should I just save this later? till later, or should we talk about it now? I was going to bring up Inscription. Let, let's the, talk about it. If that's the one you want to cool. talk about, it, let's knock it out. Okay, you, I... You, hey, no spoilers, by the way. No spoilers. I'm not done, I'm not done yet. Oh, yeah, where are you? How do I not spoiler this? Uh, Which uh, act are you? But now you've just spoiled there's more than one act. Act three. Act three. Okay. That's good enough. We, I mean, we we don't even know how many acts there are. So, anyways, I thought it was fantastic. Um, we brought up a couple times. It's one of those rare games where I laughed out loud and gasped out loud while playing. Which doesn't happen. You, very you know, often. coming from a man who, at a, I've who I've sat in a in a movie theater with you, and you 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 enter that theater and it's like the lips are sealed, the the straight jacket is on, but Tristan sits down in that movie theater chair and he does not move an inch, and he's telling me right now that you played Inscription and you made noises while playing. I made game. noises. I was in shock. Um, just to rewind a little bit, Inscription is a roguelike game, uh, a card building roguelike game, similar to uh, Slay, the Slay the Spire. Sorry, um, and is that the only tech building? What's the other there's one a, that you played? The bil- Chinese there's a, one. There's a billion of them, dude. <laughs> there's like hundreds. <laughs> Anyways, it it's, it's it Korean has a, too. <laughs> it has a, like a lot of meta things going on it's very fresh it's a it's a new video game experience mm-hmm. that's 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 what i'll leave it at and i loved all eight hours or however long it was for me yeah um, it, it's got a good uh structure overall to how it decided to it's a story mode so to mm-hmm. speak i that was really good and i really felt that uh, i believe it was daniel mullen as the developer like he just had a huge amount of fun with this title like it was just uh 
you know, like a really big passion project. So it was really cool that Devolver Digital put this out because, yeah, it's it was phenomenal as a game experience because I watched a streamer play through it and it was great just being a spectator even. Like, just it was an, awesome. When, when when I played it, um, and I'm still playing it, but when I when I first booted it up and it was at night and I had all the lights in my room off, it was so freaky, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, the, was like, the eyes and the faces, they're kind of a... Uh, and, like, the host of the game, right? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. creepy. Off-putting, that's what I'll say. There we go. Anyways, that's one of the games. I'll, I'll do the rest of my games really quickly afterwards once we uh, do the round robin or however we usually Wait, do why? What? Okay. Or, I yeah, mean, I can I, keep I going. Give us keep one going. more. Give us one yeah, more. Give us another. Give us two. Okay, here, here's another one that has some co-op or, like, you know, shared experiences unpacking Oof. that is a solid video game screw all the haters saying this game is really short it's not worth the 20 dollars however much it is this is another fresh experience this video game is literally about unpacking your stuff when you move i think there's two highlights one it tells the story through the items that you unpack i don't know albert if if you agree with that Yep, yep, yep. Um, and two, the sound design, I think I sent a tweet about it here, is phenomenal. They, they have, they have like 13,000 sound files for when you put an item on a bed versus a desk versus the floor. It's, it's crazy. That's immersive right there. Can, can we talk about one thing? Yeah. The, it's like the second to last one where she like moves in with a boyfriend or a husband. Mm-hmm. That man has poor taste. That man has poor taste. She made a bad, she made a bad move. Mm. I thought she broke up with him. That's why she, she did. She, she did. moved back she, home, right? She did. Yeah. See, yeah. Yeah. see, man had poor taste. Yeah. That- I could tell when I was unpacking, he had like a toothbrush in the shower or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Something weird. I was like, this boy ain't this boy ain't right. That's what it, I thought. It, you know how I usually tell it's it's how they organize their kitchen. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. Albert and I were playing this at the same time. Like we were on voice chat together, mm-hmm. and I think we we were basically organizing the kitchen the exact same way. Oh, and yeah. then we got to the boyfriend's house, and he was just all over the place. It was it was disgusting. Disappointing. It was oh. disgusting. <laughs> I was I was insulted. All right, well, you guys can never come to my place. And... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not going to work out between us. That's all I'm saying. Okay. You know, I think, I th- in terms of the length, just my, my two cents, it was perfect length. I think if it was too long, it would get boring. Mm-hmm. If it was too short, there wouldn't be enough complexity. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's not really like a, a hard game by any mean, because like as soon as you get everything out, it literally like starts telling you like, hey, this is in the wrong place. This is in the wrong place. But it, it, it was the perfect length game. It's like three hours long about Tristan, yeah. maybe two, two to three hours. Yeah. yeah. I think it was a good, wholesome experience, which like when we were playing it, we were like, oh, my God, this is the same plushie as before. Or I distinctly remember the um, the chicken plush that she had. Like it keeps getting more, keeps yeah, getting yeah, more. Yeah, the little baby chicks. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I compared it to to a game where you're stressed out after a long day of work. You know, one man might like myself might sit down and play a level of Power Washing Simulator, and Tristan <laughs> might go damn. and unpack you... some boxes and unpacking. Oh. Just uh, yeah, unpack your stress out. Yeah, yeah. Power yeah. wash away. Oh wait, what? A- Albert, I have a. I have an actual question. Is there some like under the table sponsorship going you know, on? I'm not allowed to disclose <laughs> any information related to my enjoyment or my shilling of various <laughs> power washing related simulating video games. We'll leave it at that. I think I heard there's like new content coming to that game. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. I checked a couple months ago. There's a bunch of new levels. I played them all. Sweet. But yeah, I, I think I'm with you guys where, uh, you know, it's good when a experience is well paced or like has a end before it gets like repetitive or too tedious. So I feel like we're gamers are kind of finding that point at this point with like certain open world games, uh, Ubisoft ones come to mind 
where they're like, well, Valhalla was fun for like the first 20 hours, but then it just keeps having the same thing over and over again. So I think we're maybe reaching the point where, you know, that strict uh, like dollar value per hour thing is not working out anymore. Where people are like, okay, well, this was fun for a few hours, but now it's getting just way too much. It, it always depends on the price tag, I feel. It does. It if does. unpacking was $60, I would have felt oh too short. Oh my god. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I definitely. feel like, I, I feel like I throw a little leniency toward indie games, right? Like, mm -hmm. obviously for the most part, especially with like a story-driven experience like this, there's no way it can be more than like 10 hours, right? Right. With right. like a, well, like a, like, I don't know how big the studio was. I can't expect it being more than like five or six people. Maybe mm -hmm. it was. I, I, I remember the credits were not short, but not too long. I don't remember exactly, but. Yeah. Definitely. I can see that sentiment though, Alex. Mm -hmm. to, to be fair, making games is very expensive. You know, even if you're an indie. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like a lot of these games don't break even. I think unpacking had great marketing and all the stuff around it because it's also on game pass i saw it on my xbox the other day mm -hmm. so but in general i i feel like even a 20 dollar indie game tends not to make like they tend not to make their money back yeah it's difficult when you work in the marketplace and stuff they take their share and things like that and then yeah just the time you have to pour into it when you're a smaller studio like the individual man hours yeah it's it's hard make ends meet and also get out the product and make it all back you know what I would have appreciated? This is a meme. Mm -hmm. is Unpacking Battle Pass. Oh. <laughs> Unpacking may may pass. Maybe you can uh, get on the team. See if yeah. you can make things <laughs> hey, work. Hey, folks, I have a great marketing <laughs> pitch. <laughs> yeah, to really increase revenue. Let's take it to the next level. What are, you, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, like, don't you know the boxes you pull stuff out of? You like yeah. you get, If you get high enough, you get on, like, a skin for your boxes. Uh, Oh, that, that's something I wasn't even thinking about. That's a great one. I was thinking, like, between moves, you you can decide to sell and buy items. Oh. Hmm. Yard sale. Yeah, yeah yard, yard sale. sale yard sale minigame. I like it. You know, I don't... Has a yard sale sim happened yet? Oh, man. <laughs> there, there's a lot of stuff you could do. You could be the seller, but you could also be the buyer. The mm -hmm. The asshole who tries to like haggle every single thing the, down. The first, the first boss is a Karen. She's like, mm -hmm. "My daughter says that this is all they worth. Ten pennies." You want fifteen dollars for this shirt? Mm, I'll do twelve. I can do five. Yeah, You're I like, can do five. Ma'am, it has a fifteen dollar price tag. I, I can do five. I, I can't do that. Yeah, I'll do five. Mm. My daughter really needs this. My daughter, you, I do it for the kids. Always do it for the kids. Always do it for the kids. Sorry. Anyways, we're getting sorry. off topic. What, sorry, we one just, last thing. We just spiraled. We just invented a video game. game. <laughs> one Your last thing. Your sales simulator. Yep. Sorry, go ahead. I, I love the little features that they put in that made it more realistic. Like, when I'm organizing my house and I don't know where to put something, I just shove it under my bed. And that's like a valid option in this game. Yeah. Or, like... Yeah. You put it under your pillow. Sometimes it's the right option. I, I know, but it was like, it just felt so relatable being able to do that versus like, it needs to go in these exact spaces. I think they mm -hmm. hit that chord very well. All right. So it's a bit of choose your own adventure. It's got freestyling in there. That's good to hear. I, di I didn't want to like force uh, like unpacking norms onto people. <laughs> Mm -mm. gatekeeping mm -mm. unpacking mm -hmm. yeah they didn't they didn't gatekeep it at all good in fact in some ways you can be like a monster where you put things like you can put your rice cooker in the cabinet who would do that rice cooker needs to be on the countertop at all times oh, mm -hmm. it, it needs to be in the prime location yeah exactly yeah, i need easy access to that exactly anyway. sorry we spent so much time on this game um I mean, justified. It's a great game. Yeah, we're gonna talk lot, about this game longer unpack. than we played it. Oh yeah. my! Oh my! Gosh, uh, I have a couple games left, but uh, let's go around just okay. so we get I'll, more games. I'll in hit here. my first one, and it's a real oldie at this point. I'm playing through the uh, OG Deus Ex and just having fun with that because nobody else will ever play it. So I <laughs> figured, why not me? Uh, but this time around, I'm doing a. There's a mod that's free actually for the original game called a Revision. And it does a lot of expanding upon the, like, hubs of the world. And it's been a pretty fun experience, actually. Because, like, as someone who's played the multiple game, like, 
billions of times. It changes the hubs to where I have to actually like explore again. So that's pretty cool. And then it doesn't really change the base experience at all. So it's still a very good experience and it just fixes bugs and stuff. Makes it a little more, uh, fix that. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Cause uh, so this is my bad. I, I, I have not seen gameplay videos of this game, but one of my core fears of going back to a really old game mm -hmm. is that the, the core gameplay is not as fun. I don't know if Deus Ex, is it like a third person shooter? It's first person. It's still first person, but uh, okay. it's definitely antiquated because it's a 2000 game. Mm -hmm. uh, so stealth is pretty basic. It usually follows the rules of if you can't see the enemy, they can't see you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you go around a corner and you're just suddenly, uh, must have been the wind. Uh, then uh, shooting follows a pretty strict, like, r old RPG aspect. So your character becomes extremely inaccurate when moving at all. But as you aim at something, you become pinpoint accurate. So that that's something to get used to. When you have low uh, shooting skills in certain guns, you just can't hit anything unless you stand still mm. for like three seconds. So that might be something to get used to if you have never played the game before. Got it. But it's still really, really fun. Oh my god, the voice lines. They, they're just like ingrained in my head, so I just basically recite them all before the NPCs. I'd be the most annoying <laughs> person to play this game with. You are not in a straight jacket in the movie theater. That's what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just people comfy, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm reciting the movie right You're next like to you. That I'm that, say I'm the, the idiot. line, say the mm -hmm. line, and then and then he says it. My vision is augmented. Aha, uh -huh, he said it. But then, yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. I just love the game. It's so much fun. Uh, then other than that, uh, I guess in the meantime, I I, I finally did it in Final Fantasy fourteen. I beat the uh, the you epic of Alexander. The yeah. For now. A day before Rich Campbell did. So there, there's my claim to fame. One okay. day. One day. Before he I was think able it was to like, clear. It was like literally like 24 hours. Yeah, it was less than 24 hours that we ended up clearing before them. Yeah, it was close. I thought he was honestly going to clear it the same day as we were going to do it. Should have just locked yourself in a closet more. this whole time. Mm -hmm. I should have. Just forced the, my team to do like seven hour days and we'll, we'll get it no problem. But no. I feel good about it. I'm glad to have gotten it done once and have like this small break before Endwalker. Did you get a reclear down yet? No. Uh, I don't know if we'll still work towards that at the moment. I think we might want to just take a break and, and see if we want to get back together after Endwalker. Everybody kind of wants to uh, just take a chill right now. So we all prep for the expansion coming up. Just want to hit that new Savage content. Except Tristan. Yeah. When's he coming the back? The fallen player. When's he coming back? When's dad I, coming I'm, back? <laughs> Why my dad? <laughs> what? Dad. Daddy. Oh. I'm like, uh, I'm retired. Yeah. You know what happens? On hiatus forever. You can forever. always get a man out of retirement. Yeah, if the if the situation calls for it, I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll suit back up, but uh, it needs to be an emergency. Yeah, it's so an far emergency. for now, we've, we, we've been no. doing good. Uh, FC's been running well. Uh, we we recently did a Halloween Glamour event, so that was a lot of fun. A lot of people participated, so it felt really good. Yeah, we had. Did anyone dress up as a Chris Pratt Mario? No, but Wait, uh, Alex did Sonic. I remember that. I did in honor of you. I remember that you did a Sonic cosplay for one of your uh, old FC events. Well, so I was Chris, like, you know what? You. Chris is not here, so I'm. Taking up the mantle. I have to be the mean guy. They already miss you, Tristan. It's like it's like you played Santa at the mall and now you're not there, so someone mm -hmm. needs to <laughs> Santa's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and with that I became Captain America. Or is that a spoiler? I don't even know. Is Captain America even dead? I don't watch the MCU. He's he's just old. I don't think he's okay, dead. Welcome he's Viewport Reeler. Are we just spoiling yeah, we're, we're yeah. one year old? Movie. I mean, to be fair, Endgame is pretty old now. Mm-hmm. It's been two years. I haven't, I haven't seen any movie past Endgame yet. Tristan oh. has lied and has seen almost every movie past I, Endgame. I, I literally just organized uh, the Spider-Man watching event because the trailer just dropped right before this recording. So I am, I've been breaking that promise pretty hard. Yo, has has Willem shown up before yet? Uh, yet? I want to see him. He Who? died, didn't he? Willem. Did Defoe. he die? 
No, he he's showing up in the in the new movie. Oh, yeah. is he? Yeah. Don't you okay. remember Doc Ock and uh Okay, okay, and sorry. Are showing Complete up. side the side tangent. Yeah, now we're a movie. Uh, in, in the new Spider-Man movie called Spider-Man No Way Home coming out December 17th in theaters only. Um, are, are you the shill? Wait, am I the shill? What is this going on? I don't know. Tristan's usually a big MCU <laughs> also, stand. Also, no so I spoilers. I haven't seen no, the no, first no. one, so this, just don't spoil this is, this is This is just the trailer. What happens yeah, in the trailer. Yeah, it's literally in a trailer. So, what happens is... Wait, did you not watch the second Spider-Man? No, I didn't. Okay, so things happen, and then... <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil it now, right? So, like, things happen, and Doc Ock comes back, Green Goblin comes back, Electro comes back from the oh, Ma- ooh, Amazing Spider-Man wow. 2. Okay. And Sandman from Spider-Man 3 comes back. Oh. Oh, man. Are we getting it? I hope they bring back Edgy Peter. Okay. As I'm Sakurai board. would say, everyone is here. Exclamation mm-hmm. point. I like that, it. That's the end of it. I don't want to spoil it anymore. But the like greatest it. hits of all Spider-Man it's, it's films. It's the Spider-Man Avengers. Spider-Avengers. The definitive edition, you definitive could say. Edition. Yeah. All right, let's get back on the video games. <laughs> Alex, what else you got? Or do you want to pass it? I don't have no, let's, much. Let's pass it. What do you got, Albert? Give uh, us a couple. We already had inscription. We already did unpacking. Mar- Mario Party came out since the last Ooh, time. Ooh, yeah. Played, right? Oh, that's an overlap with me, too. Yep, Superstar. Oh, you, I, you've played it a lot more than I have, Tristan, but I've been pl- I, I pl- I've only played three rounds. And then I, pl- I played a bunch of mini games with some friends. Um, I see. Oh, what uh, are your thoughts? It's it's uh It's pretty good. It's, all right. it's got all the classics. Let's do a quick rundown. What's been already banned in your friend groups? Only Spaceland. Only Spaceland so far. Okay. Peach's yeah. birthday cake. There's a game that we um Oh, what is it called? Tristan, have you seen Squid Game? Yeah, the is it the barrel one? No, no, no. It's the one where there's the nine platforms and it's counting down and you can like knock people. The final countdown. The final oh, countdown. Oh yeah. Final it's countdown. So we played that. For like an hour straight, like we did the mini game mode, and we just played that mm-hmm. for like an hour straight. And every time we'd lose, we'd all look at each other, and someone would be like, "Uh, let, let's bring that back. Let's bring that back. Let's, let's <laughs> yeah. run, run it back. Run it back." And we just did that for a whole hour. I I love that game because you can punch each other. Exactly. Mm-hmm. No, the secret. I'm letting out secrets here. If you jump. And you do a kick right before you hit the ground, it knocks people super far. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's new tech. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That's it knocks, you, it knocks you further than a normal punch. And it stuns you longer, too. But if you get hit in the air, it stuns you for two whole seconds. So you got to watch out. Anyways, it's pretty fun. Also, the stickers. Mwah. Oh, my God. Mwah. The well, stickers. Top three. Top three. Oh, I don't remember, but I just I just spam the most trolly ones. Oh, every you're, time. you're talking about the emotes you can do on people's yeah, turns. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. My okay. my top three are good game, Toad, good uh-huh. game. Yeah, because okay. you play it when you're winning. You can play it when mm-hmm. you're losing. Good game. It's like it's like well played. It's like yeah. well played from Dota, right? Yeah, well, good game. Well played. Yeah. Second one is but why with the blooper on it. Oh, that one's good. That <laughs> one's good. That one's good. You, you do it when somebody buys a star. You do it when somebody rolls like a one. But why? And then uh-huh. my favorite one is Fweet, the chain chomp whistle. Oh, I don't think I have that one because the sound it, it makes yet. is so annoying, and you can just spam it over and over again. Oh my goodness! And what we do in our party is the whoever is playing. The, the the other three people just keep spamming fleet. Oh my god, oh my why? God. I I love it. Okay, I need to buy that one. I think it's in the store. It sounds like one you have to buy. Mm-hmm. Fleet. I think there's one that's like nice job, and I like to spam that one whenever someone like lands on like a red square or a Bowser square. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate BS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice job. Mm-hmm. Man. It what? just makes me wish I I don't know. Are you guys thinking there'll be any like DLC support for that game? Because I I wish they would like expand it more. Because you know it's great as a nostalgia thing. I'm gonna say no, just because they didn't for the other yeah. Super Mario Party. Wait, I I thought Albert, you were last time we were only talking about how like Mario Tennis had such a good DLC. Well, support. yeah, like a year full of DLC for yeah. that game. Because I here's my take: the boards are only from Mario Party one to three. But mm-hmm, the games mm-hmm. are from Mario Party 1 to 10. Right. Yeah. I can yeah. see them adding more boards over time. But boards, I feel like, are so much work to do. 
It it is a lot, but I it's guess definitely if you're redoing big, a board, big parts of mechanics. But yeah, like the rules are already made, basically. But if they could like add more characters and more boards, I think that would be a really good strategy. Yeah. Well, I I care less about characters. Well, yeah, characters is definitely not as big. But uh, I've noticed overall, it seems like reception to this Mario Party has been very very positive uh, compared to a lot of the previous ones. He- here's my take. I I think this is what Mario Party did really well, like Superstars. Mm -hmm. This is the best online Mario Party or online Nintendo game. Yeah, that I've seen. Oh oh, yeah, we've we've definitely needed like a really good Mario Party online. That's the only reason people people hated the last one for two reasons. It had virtually no online support. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing you could do was like mini games. Um, yeah. and the other reason people hate it is you had to play with joy cons. You couldn't use pro mm. controllers. Mm. And this one literally got rid of both of those things. And then from there, it's literally like games that people love and boards that people remember. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, boom, nostalgia plus actual functionality in a video game equals yeah, win. It's just actually yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Cause like online, it, when I'm thinking a Nintendo game online, like let's say, in, first of all, you can do random ma- matchmaking, which Mm-hmm. fantastic second if you're in a random match made game and somebody drops out they replace them with a the computer immediately and oh that's they right can yeah. reconnect yeah which it's is so like good it's so good of. i mean it's this so is good. like it's like the baseline in an online game but like considering it's nintendo you're just like okay whatever right like if you drop out <laughs> like like smash bros is like halfway there mm-hmm. like in smash bros if you're in an online match if you disconnect, it, like, subs in, like, a level 7 AI, but you can't mm-hmm. reconnect back in. Right. Which maybe doesn't make sense because it's such a short game, potentially, but it's still. I I think they nailed the online game because there's, like, I mean, it's probably the nature of the game, but the latency is very low. You, you don't even notice it. Uh, Albert, right. you're playing local? Yeah, I've only played local. I haven't okay. played online. I'm I'm playing online, but all my friends are within the area, so I haven't done like any cross region type of games yet. Yeah, because I feel like there's some. Obviously, it's like still like party games, but like there's some games where like you need to be pretty coordinated, like with the two v the two two v two ones, where you both like mm-hmm. control like the bobsled or both control like the the flappy airplane thing airplane, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like you can't be that much out of six, or like the one where like. Uh, it's like the 2v2 where it's like you're plucking cherries, right? You have to put them in the basket. Oh my god, that mm. was so hard. Like, if there's bad delay, I feel like that would just be horrible. Also, what? That one's that one's hard. I, both times I've played, I've got perfect scores. <laughs> that one? Wait, are you the thrower or are you the catcher? I've done both. I If you're the thrower, the number of cherries on the bunch, like, it, it, the weight distribution is different, right? No, it's the exact same. <laughs> No, it is. If you throw a, a cherry with the with three bundles in it, it it like flies. Oh, well, I haven't noticed. I've just I've just been I've, you know. Maybe if I found the uh, perfect spot to throw yeah, it, out. Albert's just exactly. a perfect gamer. Also, the the hop the hops the hula fire hops. What what is it? <laughs> hot <laughs> stroke hop, uh, jump rope or whatever. Yeah, yeah, hot yeah. jump rope. Too easy. Ninety nine. Uh, oh yeah, like yeah. Nine, nine, nine. That, that one's always been one where people will just keep I going th- and going. I think the uh, the online leaderboard is like ten thousand. Yeah, no, the high score is nine 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 nine, and then yeah, yeah. and then it just stops. Yeah. Um, but it's got some good ones, man. It's got great mini. Like my one of my favorite shy guy says, "What a great oh, one. I love great shy one. guy." Yeah, says. What a great one. Mm-hmm. Though the three v one where you look a certain direction. Oh, that one's great. Oh, that was a good one too. Oh, I like yeah. the hide and seek one for three v one. Ah. Uh, uh. Okay, here's my top three games. I like the one where you press down the the lever and like the Bowser may explode. Yep. Okay. Oh, the, yeah. The, the, how, yeah. The, how many like one, times? Of the, one of the quintessential classics. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like that mm-hmm. one. I like Dungeon Duos, which is a two v two. Yeah, that yep. one's fun. Another solid one. And I like Snow World. Snow World. Snow World. Remind it, me what, what's it, that it, one? It, you're on a snowboard and you jump oh, off a ramp okay. and you need oh, to yeah. do like three sixty. Oh, yeah, yeah, my yeah. record is like seven thousand. Yeah. I I I have a strategy. Where I, I put my shirt over my thumb and I just That's like cheating. mash That's it over. Cheating. That's Is that cheating. cheating? That's sh- if you want to win, you gotta feel pain. All right. Do you, no wait. Do no you do pain? The, no gain. Do you do yeah. the four finger strategy? I do the two finger. Stra- I do two fingers and I just uh-huh. rub it in a circle and that 
kind of sounds. Tristan's out here doing a tool assisted <laughs> run. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's Sorry. cheating. That's I cheating. also like Pokey Pummel. That's a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a classic. The the one that I can't do is the dizzy dizzy dance or whatever where you're on the record and it like oh. inverts your controls. And you oh, I also I also cheat on that one. I just hold my controller upside down. Oh my wow. goodness! This guy takes all the fun. Yeah, this guy doesn't everything. respect content. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I bet I bet when he played like split screen back in the day, he's he's a screen looker. I bet you. <laughs> I know it, Tristan. Anything right. for the dub. Let's keep mm-hmm. moving. Uh, I'll do my last one. Oh, this one could be long though. Oof. Oof. Wait, we're gonna. Let's we're go we're never else gonna get to the news. <laughs> there's not much news. We'll get to it, but there's not much news. And let's be honest. Wait, wait. Yeah. Before we get to the next game, what is your setup of choice for Mar- Super Mario Par- Mario Party Superstar? Like, as in the game, like the the turn based. Like, what what settings do I choose? Yeah. Uh, we do twenty turns. Bonus stars on, because that's always exciting, right? You always want mm-hmm. bonus stars. Yeah, um, get a random star at the end. And then, what are the other options? I don't remember. Uh, the the game set. Remember, you can choose, like, all games, skill oh, games. Oh, all games, and all six, games, okay, all okay. games, all games, all games, yeah. And handicap. No handicap, no handicap. Okay. Why would you handicap someone? Unless you know they're bad, but, you know, we all, I, we're I, all gamers. Well, listen to this. Okay, so we do 20 turns, Peach's birthday cake banned. We might ban the Yoshi one next. That's that's a long story. I'll, I'll tell you guys afterwards. Um, you guys are no fun. I know. Uh, what's the next one? Um, Why do you like Space Lane? I feel like Space Lane's so big. It's probably one of the most boring ones in my opinion. I feel like 20 turns is the right amount of turns for Space Land. Anyways, we do we did 20 turns. Um, Peach's Breath of Cape banned. All games. And listen to this. Handicap. But we give everyone two stars. So you can steal? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, why not yeah, one? A, a one handicap makes sense, too, for that purpose. Yeah, why not one? Why two? Oh, we can make it one. I don't know. We, we've always done two. 2021 yeah. inflation of the yeah. stars. Because yeah. <laughs> cause the thing is, like, if you land on a chance space early, it makes it that much more exciting. Oh, or Bowser space where you can lose a star. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, next game, last game for me. This one might be a while. Battlefield 2042. Oh, you guys take it away. What a wild, uh, early access weekend. Am I right now? Beta tester weekend. I didn't know you could pay for being a beta tester, but. Yeah, um, apparently now you can just pay to be a QA tester at this point. Um, The honor. I'm actually, for the most part, other than one day, I might be able to play it for the most part. Alex is, you know, unable to play due to horrible optimization for specific... Yeah, apparently CPU my CPU, and... it's like one of the few where uh, on the Reddit, there's like multiple people with the same exact CPU that are just like, it's just maxing out my CPU at 99%, while it's still far above the minimum requirement for the game. But yeah, it just, it does not run. It stutters like crazy. It's it, it's unplayable in its current state for me. Here's my question. Mm-hmm. Is Alex missing out? <sighs> uh, it, a little. Well, it's not a that A little bad bit, of a but game. yeah. I don't think it's that bad. I, I really like the setting of the game. I think the setting feels all right. But they did like a lot of weird decisions. It's crazy to me at times that this game came out after Battlefield Five Because it feels like none of the lessons learned from Battlefield Five were put into this game. It feels like they almost... No, no. Just here's start the thing. with like a blank here's, slate or something. Here's the thing. They did keep the lessons, the lessons everyone hated, which was like the TTK <laughs> changes. That's what they like kept. Oh, yeah, kind of, yeah. Because, yeah, guns hit like nothing at longer range. But I also figured out there's like a, there's a reason for that. And it's a, uh, next time you try it out, if you haven't noticed yet, if you fire full auto at range, the spread and bullet deviation actually becomes crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like Battlefield 4. Yeah. Uh, style it's a little better than 4, of, but it's it's yeah. about that level. Mm-hmm. Except I found out, and this is why everyone's doing it. There's a gun in the game, PP29, or oh, as yeah. you might know, the Bison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. The SMGs in that game shoot like laser beams. Yeah. The assault rifles are like way over at this point, yeah. where they've yeah. just made them way too inaccurate. So there's yeah, only, there's only two away. guns I use, three guns I use. The SMGs. For anything like mid-range or close-range. Mm-hmm. 
the DMRs, because they're single shot, so they obviously shoot oh, mostly yeah. where you want them to. Sometimes they have a little weird deviation, but they're pretty and accurate. And the SVK, oof. I love two, the SVK. Two shot kill. Dude, I used That's to That's all use, you need to say. It's just there, there was the ZH-29 in Battlefield yes. 5. I would use Another that so much. Another dumb gun. Yep. I would, and everyone hated me for it. Mm-hmm. Everyone hated it, but I love that gun. It's the exact same gun pretty much. It's like a six shot, two shotter. Six bullets, two shot kill. Anyway. Yeah. So the big um, thing is, uh, yeah, the game is just not well balanced. It's not well optimized. Maps. Maps uh, are good. Maps are actually that, pretty that's good. What I was going to ask. I think maps I felt are really good. Overall, I felt like the maps were not designed fully for conquest. It feels better personally to me on breakthrough. I don't know if you have the same opinion, Albert. It actually it, flips. There's some maps that are good on conquest and some okay. maps that I feel work better on, on breakthrough. Yeah. And it Although I like, will say a majority of the maps work well on breakthrough. There's a couple that don't work as well. well for, for me and listeners, I guess, what is breakthrough? So All breakthrough right, so, was a game okay. mode they added in Battlefield 5, which is you push one sector at a time. It's kind of like Rush. But it's Rush Conquest version. Oh, where there's, okay, okay. There, the map is split up into five zones, right? And so, as opposed to one big map, and everyone's fighting on one zone at a time. And there's two flags, and in order to go to the next one, you have to hold both flags at the same time. Okay, I, I remember that. Which, with 128 player breakthrough, is insane because there's just so many people. Yeah, online. it's very intense. It's like yeah. two flags per zone, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it it, it uh, centralizes all the conflict to. Two points, basically, and you have to what? play defense on those two points, and you have to play offense on those two the, points. The one that's bad, Alex, the breakthrough maps that are bad is like... Uh, is Breakaway the, and uh, Kaleidoscope, the boat one, and the... Kaleidoscope's actually okay. The the one... It's the reason why, and this is like a real throwback, and maybe like over people's heads, but you remember Iwo Jima back in Battlefield Five on Breakthrough? Yes. It was horrible, because the Allies had like six tanks, and the Japanese had like two Mm-hmm. So as soon as their tanks died, like, if you're playing on the Japanese side, like, every corner you turn, there's just a tank right there. Mm-hmm. There's a, is it called Horizon? It's the one with the Middle East in Qatar. Okay, yeah. That yeah, one, don't... it's the Americans, like, pushing the Russians, and the Americans get, like, six tanks. And, like, it's just horrible. Oh, yeah, and that first point, it's, like, five feet from the U.S. spawn. And there's it's no, impossible. and you start out in the desert, so there's mm-hmm. nowhere to hide, so you're just getting coaxial machine gun from every direction, and it's just like, oh my goodness. And oh man, I don't even want to talk about the hovercrafts right now. They're but, so broken. Uh, <laughs> they're so broken. <laughs> they're said, the ul- they're the ultimate weapon of future warfare. They are! They're so broken. They are so fast. They take like three rockets to kill, and good luck doing that because they regen super fast. After too. ten seconds, they yeah. start regening, and it takes you five seconds to reload a rocket mm-hmm. launcher. So it's literally almost impossible to kill one. And basically, any armament it has on top for the top gunner is just good. Like the mini gun that it starts with on base it's absolutely good. slays infantry. The grenade launcher is amazing. The grenade launcher does. The 30 millimeter cannon just makes it into like an anti-armor and anti-infantry killing machine. Yeah, it's just... And uh, it can roadkill it, so oppressive. easy. It can yeah. roadkill so easy. And they're like silent. You can't hear them coming. Yeah, it's crazy right now. Uh, they so can, I and they can climb up buildings. <laughs> yeah, and the, yeah, the gravity to find. They can just climb up any size skyscraper or building. And just there's, fly across the map. There's, like, one easy nerf that they could do. If you hit it in the propeller, it slows down to, like, 20% speed. Probably that, or make it maybe take, like, one less rocket or yeah, something. Yeah, two shot, exactly. It needs a slight nerf. And the fact yeah. that some maps, an enemy team can spawn seven hovercraft is just, mm-hmm. like, it's it's too much. It's too yeah. much. <laughs> and it's pretty obvious people are already figuring out, like, the really OP metas, like, everyone's <laughs> starting to run around the PP-29. PP-29 and to boat. Run around. Yeah, and PP-29 the, the and boat. Yeah, are yeah. mm-hmm. like, the... And, and, and honestly, the scout choppers are broken. Oh, I haven't seen that much yet. They take two to rockets play. to kill, mm. two stingers to kill, and it's essentially, like, by the time you can shoot the second one, or you shoot the first one, you flare, right, so it doesn't yeah. hit, and then they're involved for, like, six or seven seconds, and then you shoot the second rocket, and they're already flying away, so you maybe hit them once, but you can't get a third rocket off. Yeah, and this is a weird game where it's like the first time where it felt feels like jets really aren't that useful, and it's the helicopters that are like super OP. Yeah, the helicopters have always been OP, but yeah, yeah they've always been there's no broken. bomber variant of the jets, which mm-hmm. is why you don't feel it, which is good. Yeah. In my opinion. I guess that's true. Yeah, the jets are have a really weird role right now where they don't really have much to fight. They're like air superiority, like purely mm-hmm. air superiority. Which and is even fine. then, even then, I think you'd probably just want to attack helicopter. I, I will say. It's it's the wingsuit person is 
so much fun to play. Oh yeah, you can. I like, think I've I've been using uh, Angel. I think the one who can give out armor. Yeah, and I use ammo. Angel and the really wingsuit good. person. When I when I play Breakthrough, I do I do Angel. When I play Conquest, I play the wingsuit person. You can go with a shotgun. You can like dive off a building mm. mid air. Turn off your wingsuit. You'll get perfect accuracy. You just shotgun someone from the air, and then you just get back in your wingsuit and you just shoot away. It's like amazing. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's. I'm disappointed, honestly. Of course, I thought that it worked so poorly on early release. Uh, uh, they got a long ways to go, I think, to make the game good. Which is I feel like in six months, this game could be amazing. Yeah, that, that's my general feel, too. So if you're out there and you're like, should I get this game? It'll I'd be half say, off in six months, too. So perfect. Yeah, most uh, get a EA Play. You can pay like $3 and play like 10 hours of it. And I think that's good for now. Like, it's it's not worth sinking a lot of time into, in my personal opinion. I, I had a question mm. around, we talked about maps, um, but how is the levolution are there a lot of randomized events? Yeah, non-existent. it's non-existent. It's barely existent. There's nothing you can really destroy in this game. Or or even, like, I remember when we were playing the beta, like, the tornado that spawns was very rare. Like, it, going back to Battlefield 1, the blimp... Wait, yeah. was the blimp every map? I I, I forget. It was oh, yeah, behemoths were basically yeah. every yeah, map. They were, com- yeah. they were the comeback mm-hmm. mechanic of every okay. map. Okay. Is there a lot of randomized, like, map-scale events that happen? Not really. The weather can change a bit, which is pretty nice, honestly. It's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing huge. And like, it, it almost seems like they toned down how often Tornado spawns to even less than before. Hmm. Yeah. And, and the only time I've had, I've had it twice and it's, it's been favorable one time and unfavorable the other time. The one time the, it's favorable is when you're playing breakthrough and there's a mm-hmm. tornado and it runs right through the defenders and they can't see anything and your yeah. team just gets like a free pass. Uh, I had it, the opposite happen to me where I was defending and like a windstorm tornado came in and it like screwed up our defenders like so bad that they just ran through us. Yeah. And that, that seems to be a pretty big thing right now. A breakthrough seems very, very difficult as an offense to ever win. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure that'll. It, the only ones I've seen it on is like the map where you get like four tanks. Yeah. But like, there's like weird, ba- there's like very tricky balancing with that four tanks thing. I don't want to go too deep, but it's like, mm-hmm. The defending team gets like a couple helicopters, but if your pilots suck, then it like doesn't matter, right? You just get yeah, steamrolled. Yeah. Um, other so, questionable yeah. decisions of like no voice chat, obviously. Like, yeah, that's, that's weird that it's not in there at all. I was like, oh, because I was going through options to turn it off, and I'm like, wait, it's not even here. Yeah, uh, there's the whole no uh, all chat thing. Oh, I didn't no, mind that. I just turn off. Yeah, chat I'm fine completely. with that. Like, I'm honestly fine. People are like, there's no all chat. It's like. Dude, have you seen the team chat? Everyone is so toxic, and now you mm-hmm. want to open that up to everyone? That's horrible. Um, also, Some good the old uh, Battlefield Five uh, political debates; those were always fun. <laughs> here, here's here's one where I might get roasted over the coals. There's no scoreboard. I think it's mm-hmm. fine. Wow. I think it's fine. Oh, honestly, okay. okay. I, I, think yeah, I, think I think it's fine. I think it should be an option to enable it if you want it. I feel like by default, it's a good thing. And hear me out. If there's any Battlefield players that are like, are you kidding me? I want to see how well I'm doing. It's like, I agree that, like, that's a good thing. You should be able to see how you're doing. But there are so many times in Battlefield where people are like, you know, it's not about kills. It's about PTFO, right? And it's like, yeah, well, yeah. that's why you get people on Breakthrough that are sitting in the back of the map with your tank on assault, not helping push because there's a scoreboard and they just say, hey, we lost, but I went 50 and 0 on the attacker. I'm so good. But now there's no scoreboard. So I see a lot of our players just like maybe t- like going maybe like too crazy, but they just drive that tank in there. Maybe they blow up, but like no one cares, right? No one sees your KD. So mm-hmm. I feel like, especially with a, with there's no team deathmatch game mode, right? Where it's like, why do kills, why should kills be an indicator of how well you're doing on the map when the objective of the map is PTFO? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the kind of funny, uh, juxtaposition yeah where it's like players, everyone yeah. everyone all the hardcore battlefield people are always yeah. like ptfo but then they're like yeah i want to play the objective but, but i also ratio. want my yeah i want my kd and it's like I, I agree it should be an option right for people who want mm-hmm. to see that but i think by default like not having it show up is a good thing because it yeah, forces over, people overall, to think about I don't, objectives yeah i don't mind having that old scoreboard 
I wouldn't mind if you can still get it. But uh, overall, I do think the UI does need some like visual improvements to make it easier to read. I, yeah. It's kind of hard to read some of the information off of it currently. Yep, yep. Also, the number one change I hate is you can't see how much damage you do anymore when you hit enemies. Yeah, that's another thing I don't like. It's definitely harder to gauge how much you're actually doing. And I think hit rich might just be kind of iffy right now in general. So it, it might also yeah, be making it's, it hard. It's, it's not as bad as the beta. It's definitely a lot better than the yeah, beta. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Like DMRs are actually very usable in weapons now. Cause yeah, <laughs> it's easier to hit people who are moving now than yeah. it was in beta. Yeah. But yeah, definitely long ways to go. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, I don't know, is it beta considered? Uh, there was another shooter that came out very recently, aka yesterday. Do you want to talk about that one at all? Has anyone sunk their teeth it. into it? I've played it. I Can I was just telling Albert that I bought, bought the Battle Pass. Oh, oh and uh, the, for our listeners, this is Halo Infinite we're talking about. We're yeah. shifting over, just so everybody's in the know. Um, it, it dropped yesterday. L- let me just go through my other games first. I'm just going to name okay. drop them, not even talk about them. So I've also been playing Shin Megami Tensei Five, oh, which came yeah. out. Oh yeah, is did you get into that at all? I played thirty minutes because okay. I forgot it even came out. So I like yeah. scrambled and bought it. Um, here's my like thirty second take. Bite size th- review. I think they got influenced by Persona success a little too much because the first mm. thirty minutes spent a little too much time on the high school thing. Oh, okay, yeah, they spent like a lot of time in the like build up pre world. Yeah, and I was like yeah. SMT four just kind of dove right into it and people were dying, you know. That's right. What, that's what I bought th- that's what I paid sixty dollars for. Come on, what's happening? So I'll spend more time there uh in a little bit. I've also been playing a bunch of Legion T D two, um, which is based on a Warcraft three uh custom map. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Been playing a bunch of Forza Horizon five, which also came out. A lot of fun. Yeah, that I, game looks stellar. Like I, it's very beautiful, but it also looks like honestly as a car game, that looks really fun. Yeah, I love driving games. That's like my guilty pleasure, and that is basically where I spent the most of my time in the past two weeks. Um, I think I played around fifteen hours of it already. It's it's fantastic. Uh, and let's see. Actually, those are the main ones. So we can we can go to Halo Infinite. So that came out yesterday. Um, I played the beta. The 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 skins that I bought during the beta did not carry over. Oh man, progress so was, not carried over. Yeah, so Deal that was a that. negative. Um, the battle pass, they made the battle pass more grindy to. Yeah, level I've no, I've noticed progression is very slow on this battle pass. And just, uh, so viewers know, these battle passes do not have a time limit. So you can grind them forever as long as it takes. But, uh, you can't grind two at the same time. You just have yeah. to select, like, an act. It's like an active one, right? You choose, like, which one you're yes, working on. Yes, you choose which one you're working towards, yes. And it's still $20, so you, you gotta it's put in the money. 20 or 10? Oh, 10, sorry. I, yeah, 10. That, that, that's my problem. I, I spent. Oh, $20. you, you got oh. the level skips, huh? Uh-oh. Okay. We Uh-oh. spent Uh-oh. it. Yeah, we Uh-oh. got him. We got and, him. He wanted right. the skins, I see. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, gameplay. They added a bunch more guns, which has been great. Mm-hmm. I love the Mangler, which is like a shotgun that has a knife on the end of it and it does uh, extra melee damage. Okay. So, yeah. uh, they added that. They is added that a new the... one or is that in Halo 5? I don't remember. I have not played anything past 2. It's like okay. the, it's like a brute shotgun kind of deal. Okay. I think, it, I think it was from an older Halo game, but yeah, uh, overall my initial impressions is, yeah, it's got a lot of like, really good like arena shooter content it feels yeah. like right out the gate yeah it's a lot of fun they added a couple of modes that were not in the beta mm-hmm. uh like one flag capture the flag which is like you take turns doing capture the flag so one team right, defends right. and the other yep. team uh is the offense oddball um, too right yeah well, oddball has mm-hmm. been a lot of fun um i think if i had any complaints the big team battles which is like their take on battlefield i guess it's it's like i think 12 v 12 yeah it's 12 v 12 24 players yep yeah that is not that fun 
Yeah, it's got a lot of chaos. I've noticed that. It's just chaotic, which I I think that's fine, honestly. Like, there should be a mode for people who just want to kind of, like, jump into a mode that's pretty casual. You just run around, you know, get frags and have fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, A couple of the game modes, I don't know. Like, there's one where you have to, like, control three sectors. That one never seems to have any points scored from what I've seen. So that one might need to be tweaked on certain maps. But, yeah, it, it seems fine. It does what it does. But then there's like the like six v six mode I think, where you do like smaller uh four v four four v four okay yeah that's like CTF that, that's all and I all play. those yeah mm-hmm. so do you play like the TDM or like odd- well it, it's like randomized where you, where you hold oh okay yeah so it just like randomizes the maps and the modes that you play on is is oddball the KTF game mode um CTF. no KTF keep the flag oh okay. I don't know if there is a keep the flag mode. I saw Banny playing one last night. You have to hold it for like two minutes total. Oh, is that oddball? I don't. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I don't. Oddball know. is where you have the skull and you have to hold yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Which sounds like what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's a keep the flag. Okay. I pers yeah. I personally like TDM, and I also like one flag. That that's my personal preference. Yeah. I think the game just looks really satisfying. Like, I think the, I know it was harped on that Infinite's uh, visual design, especially at the start, was a bit uh, interesting, to say the least. But I don't know. I think the visual style of the multiplayer is very good. It yeah. looks just pretty. It runs seemingly very well on people's rigs. Uh, so it's like the complete opposite of Battlefield at the moment. Oh, no. I've, I've, I've heard multiple people say it's, it, it's the best Halo, at least, like, feel in terms of the multiplayer mm-hmm. since Halo 3. Mm, okay. It, yeah. it feels it, really good to play. Yeah, it feel, it looked like they really kept the roots of, like, the Halo multiplayer experience, but then they, like, brought it into the modern era, uh, if that makes sense, in terms of, like, the, I guess, mon- monetiz- monetization method and things like that. But overall, like, the Battle Pass, it seems fair because it's just a bunch of cosmetic items emblems and i think like visual effects that you know oh about. man i can go into that for like a lot of time yeah. customization in that game is fantastic because you can customize all parts of your armor yeah there's like bracer slots pauldron slots yeah. everything yeah, yeah. there mm-hmm. there's a um a shader that's destiny tristan talking mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you can color all your armor you can have prosthetics for your limbs. Right. You can put stickers. Can, can you be the real John Halo? I I don't know. I don't think they let you yet, but it's, no. it's definitely going to be a skin to become there, John Halo. There's like a samurai skin that's like level 100 on, on the battle pass. Tristan, did you, go, did you boost up to that one? No, I... How high does the honest, battle pass go to? What like, Level 100, the, I think. Level 100 is the final level. Yeah. And to be honest, my customization for my character is I have four prosthetic limbs. <laughs> Damn. I'm are like, you, are I'm you like the, half Are robot. you the USA colors? I remember seeing some red, white, blue skins. Yes, <laughs> there's the red, white, blue, which is either USA or Gundam, depending on which I want the Gundam on. one, but like I, I have not unlocked it yet. So hmm. I'm, I'm using like the Master Chief green. Okay. Um, as long as you're not the level one gray. Yeah. And there's stickers in this game, which I really like. There's like a whole bunch of cat stickers that you can put Tr- on. Tristan is literally just shilling Battle Pass right now. And everyone. customization. That's like every, like, even when I play Pokemon, at least the new ones, that's all I focus on. I want the mm-hmm. nicest looking clothing. I want the nice looking sling messenger bag, right? Anyways, Halo has a lot of stickers. There is a series of cat stickers that I really like. Mm. Uh, you just got the- Alex. You just got Alex on board. It's free. It's free, um, Alex. Wait. Answer this for me. Is there an anime girl AI yet that can talk to me? During no, the but I oh. accidentally chose the... um, And it, I just sound like Naruto the entire time. <laughs> I, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I need to change that, but I haven't figured out where that option is. I love how they were just like, guys, the multiplayer's done. The multiplayer is going to be free to play. Yeah. Let's just launch it early. Like, why are we going to wait, make people wait? Yeah, right? Like that, That's stellar. Yeah, I, I think it's a great strategy so far. And yeah, depending on how they... I think they've got a good plan to support it. So it at least seems like a pretty solid experience they can jump into for free. 
which is oh, a free. good word free maybe i i definitely will have to probably have to try it because it's free man can't, yeah, can't give up free. I don't know if I really like uh, high TTK games like Halo as much anymore. But yeah, I mean, definitely. it's high TTK unless you have the right gun. True, or energy or unless sword. you you get good, and then it's not high yeah. TTK anymore. But I'm I'm the guy who just shoots assault rifle and I mean, dies there's no every more, single. There's no more Halo one like two pistol headshots and then a mm-hmm. pistol still pretty strong. TBH. Yeah, the pi- the pistol is still very very strong, but it's not Halo one level to broken. Alrighty, do we actually Games. get to the news now for like ten yeah. minutes? Forty sure. minutes of wh- what you've been playing. We had to get it off our chest. I mean, and to be know. fair, there's been a lot of games that have been coming. Yeah, out, so we're, like, we're hitting a holiday season, so you know we're jumping into more and more things. Let's be real, the news is just depressing. Okay, so <laughs> it is. We're gonna talk about happy stuff, and then yeah. the listeners can all listen in on our sadness. Uh, good old game escapism. We'll try to run through this in what fifteen minutes? Let's say we'll say like fifteen minutes. Yeah, let, let's let's do that. Maybe faster. Uh, GTA the trilogy. Oh boy, we crapped on this game from the trailer, and it came out, and it was even worse than Wait, people thought can, it would be. Can you guys give me a TLDR of what actually happened? Like I I I I like read bits and pieces, but I don't know why it happened. I played like slight devil's advocate on the previous episode so i guess i'll cover what's happened uh so what happened off this off the boat is that uh this definitive edition was created by i believe it's like grove street games or something which is like the people who did the mobile game offshoot for the gta titles so uh they got pulled in to do uh the like pc and console experience and uh, you can guess how that went in terms of uh bugs and stuff uh, but overall, what happened is they had licensed songs that they had to remove for this game, and also old uh, mod content for San Andreas uh, that people are probably familiar with. Uh, and they accidentally left them in there, so they, uh, you know, probably preceding some possible legal action, they had to remove the game from the store, and then remove those music files. And that mod, or unfinished content, rather, from the game. And overall from that, uh, it's got a lot of bugs. Uh, certain missions are not completable at the moment on PC. Like, uh, if you try to do a keyboard mouse, there's a uh, flying is really weird right now. You cannot do it. I mean, I think I've seen other things, like, there's, like, weird expanding cars and stuff. In Wait, what? GTA 3. <laughs> like, if you wiggle your car, it apparently just, like, expands. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have like to find it. the video for you guys later. It's crazy. I, I don't know what's going on. But yeah. And there's other weird things like the the rain effect is just awful in the game. I don't know what they were thinking. It's like impossible to see what's going on when it rains in that game now. I mean, there's there's already the 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 the, the already continuing discussion of the character models look horrible. Oh yeah. Like the GTA three ones are just wild. They, like they the eyes, yeah. eyes don't move or anything. They literally took, like, all the game models and just ran them through, like, an automated, like, thing that just, like, smooths out polygons. I sent Tristan a picture earlier, mm-hmm. but there was, like, uh, a, a restaurant. It was, like, a Reddit picture yesterday of called the Tough Nut Donut, right? So, the original game, there was, like, oh, a, yeah. on top of it, there's, like, a giant donut, and then there's, like, a lug nut, right? Which has, like, six sides to it. They just mm-hmm. ran it through that post-processing model thing to smooth everything out and now the donut's still a donut but the nut with six sides now just looks like a like a, a, a washer a washer <laughs> i've not seen it has that like 20 on sides on it and it's like oh my goodness yeah and, uh, i think it, the the art style for the characters works slightly better in vice city and san andreas but they're still pretty awful I think it's also it's getting a lot of flack because as soon as it came out, they like removed the old ones. That that's the other like big thing that I really don't from... like is yeah, you cannot pick up the old editions of GTA anymore uh, digitally at least. So if you go on to play the original's non-definitive edition, you cannot unless you uh, find certain other outlets to get them. Yeah, I Wait, heard they right. also like went after like mods and things like that too. Yes, the old they, uh, Take Two apparently has been going on a like crusade to stop all mods for just about everything it is this the second instance of a big triple a i don't know if this is triple a but like triple a studio pulling their or like basically unreleasing their game 
regardless of how well, they got see, there. Well, see, that's the thing. They unreleased it to, quote, unquote, take out the songs, right? Uh-huh. But it's like, mm-hmm, yep. When your game has a 0.5... They also unreleased the previous versions of the game, is what they also did. Yeah. I see. No, I was, like, trying to relate it to Cyberpunk. Ah, okay. Yeah, where it was pulled from sale. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it was, like, a forced okay. unrelease, where this is, I guess, quote-unquote, voluntary. Yeah, I can't remember many other instances where that's occurred. Maybe like that a indie game, but never like huge time. time. I think I forget mm-hmm. which game it was. Yeah, it was <laughs> called Super Mario 3D All Stars. <laughs> yeah, I guess true. <laughs> yeah, kind of in a way, but that was like the plan for whatever reason. Either way, yikes! Yeah, I guess those. Um, yeah, it's definitely getting review bombed. I know by people, and that's another thing that's really weird is that. Uh, I don't know when the review embargo for that ends for like critics. Oh, that so. was the, that was the other thing. Uh, the embargo they didn't release review copies till after the game came out. Okay, yeah. So they absolutely knew that so this game was, was going to be horrible. a disaster. Yep. And yeah, it's it's a rough situation because yeah, it's definitely unfortunate because yeah, removing the original versions of the game hits me because like I have a lot of nostalgia with the original Vice City and what they did with the remaster where they take out a bunch of the Songs of that era and stuff. It, I don't know. And the models, it's just rough. I don't know what they're thinking. They got to do like a Mass Effect remaster where they, you know, actually take their time. Yeah, they're just like, you know what? Everybody else is releasing remasters. I guess we'll just release easy cash grabs too. Yeah, put one in the microwave. Mm-hmm. Now make make us another GTA Five already. It, it kind of gives a bad like name because there's a couple of studios out there that do superb ports of games or even mm-hmm. blue points of blue point. yeah, blue points probably the big one yeah um i'm thinking of a uh, what are they called um not tripwire that's that's the different that's the that's the killing floor it's the people who do who do like the switch game ports a bunch for nintendo like they did like doom and witcher 3 and things like that where like even though it's just a port like they got that game like running really well, even though it doesn't look the greatest. Like mm-hmm. they did what they could, and they added like extra features and things like that to make it like accessible. Um, and just seeing like a couple of times now that some studios are just like completely bungled ports and stuff. I wonder <laughs> I if it that like word. Mm-hmm. if it just like d- uh, like devalues sort of like the work that some of these other studios go through. Um, mm-hmm. yeah definitely like it does yeah it definitely do. makes it look like almost a farce because yeah it reminds me of the days when uh the silent hill trilogy remaster whatever it was marketed as where it's just an absolute travesty of the first three games it just they're completely broken messes they don't work well they don't function right at a core level it's just it's rough when there is these old games and there's like Less ways to play them if you're a newer gamer. And, yeah. They do stuff like this. Just put out very poor products that almost seemingly just make a quick buck. Yep. Yep. All right. Moving on. You know, we're going to lump <laughs> Bobby Kotick in with this next one. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, we're they're, talking they're about they're Ubisoft next. It's like a... Are we on an alternating schedule at this point? Or is it like... Activision does something, and then Ubisoft does something, and then Activision does something, and then Ubisoft. Yeah, they're I, definitely competing right now to see who can be the worst studio. Who can be the or not worst studio. studio, but the worst like corporation? Yeah, publisher. Yeah, mm-hmm. off to the side, they're smiling. Yeah, they're at least finally the heat sort of off of us. You know, their battlefield situation, but at least we're not in this. Uh, yeah, it's like, hey, we might make trash games, but at least we're not trash people. Okay, I mean, we'll <laughs> lay off. <laughs> at, at least knowingly, yet. yeah. Or, yeah, or slash aged like milk in a couple months out. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we know any developers from EA Studios that people like know by name? I wonder. Uh, how about the CEO guy? The, isn't he? Does oh, he look like a video game villain or something? The, like the Norwegian, oh, that's kinda... the Swedish guy or whatever his yeah. name is. Andrew yeah. Wilson, that guy. Oh, maybe he's Australian. from he's from Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the Dice CEO. I think maybe I don't know, but either way, yeah, you were, yeah, the head developer, or whatever. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. a couple things from well, the Ubisoft ones. Uh, Far Cry, like 
producer, very famous producer, worked on a bunch of Far Cry games since Far Cry 3, has left Ubisoft. Um, and this kind of went hand in hand with another article that made some waves um, about Ubisoft. Essentially, they're losing a lot of people, so they are announcing pay mm-hmm. raises. Um, right. It, it was kind of weird in terms of public reception. So they stated that they were increasing like the associate developer salaries only by like five or six percent, but that senior developer salaries were going up like twenty to twenty five percent. Um and people were like, look at that. Like all the new people getting getting, you know, like getting the short end of the stick again, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, Ubisoft said in their thing, like the reason why they wanted to do this was because they were trying to prevent turnover of more senior level employees because those are harder to replace. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. You're expendable at the low level. Yeah. And it's, it's like, that's unfortunate. It's like, yeah, you make less money, but I feel like that's not just a video game industry thing. It's right. Right. Like, nope. That, that, that's capitalism 101. Yeah. That's right just there. capitalism 101. Right. To be fair, if you're a new hire, I might cut this out. You're mm-hmm. like the best way to make more money is to switch jobs. So if they're new to Ubisoft, they probably got a pretty good. Yeah, I, I imagine a lot of these uh, newer hires, they're basically poached out of, like, university fresh out. Yeah. So they, yeah. they'll, like, accept anything at this point. They just want scraps to be and, able to, like, have a car or something. Yeah, and I want to distinguish right here. There's a difference between, like, making less than a senior dev versus not making enough to, like, make a proper living, yeah. right? Because I think <laughs> some of them were, like, associate developer salaries were starting at, like, $56,000 or something, right? Which is, like... You know, in some parts of the country are, like, not enough to live on, right? Yeah. So. Most cities. Yeah. So, I want to make that distinction. But still, there's some people that's like, what? 20% raises for the senior? What? They're crazy. No. It it just means that uh, their profit margins have dipped, like, less than a percent. And they could have been paying you more the entire time. Here's my concern. Um. Mm. This is this is all speculation. Obviously, I'm not at Ubisoft or Activision or whatever. I don't know anyone there. Mm-hmm. But if there are concerns about the culture, usually the people who are still there and are in higher positions are part of the problem. Yeah. So if you give the senior folks a raise to ha- help them, you know, make them stay. Is that really solving the problem? Yeah, and that has been a huge criticism of especially Ubisoft, is that a lot of the, uh, I don't know what to call them, aggressors or accused, uh, I don't know what kind of tile we should give them. But uh, yeah, basically the people who have complaints against them have basically not been removed from positions. And that's so, the whole our, our Ubisoft Activision. Is, that's like Activision a, as well. It's similar to Activision, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's coming out that Activision is doing the same thing, where they're really not punishing these people for the things that they're allegedly doing. I mean, in some ways they're, they're, they're kind of learning from like the tech industry where it's kind of like, if you pay people enough money, they'll tolerate more crap. (laughs) It's kind of what they, yeah, basically you you buy people off. Yeah. Which works for a lot of people, but for some people, more money isn't just going to make the prom or a prom swept under the rug. Yep. And sometimes, you know, the problem's bigger than just make money to make yeah, it go away. Yeah, like a culture issue, and or not culture, but like, oh, well, I guess work culture issue, kind of. Like, worth ethics and morals in the workplace and being treated as a basic human. Yeah, and it's like, as uh, we've seen, like, with Blizzard especially, like, with, like, how it's affected their games over the past two years and with how delayed games have been, like... Yeah, definitely with a lot pay, of the news. Yeah, yeah, even if you pay mm-hmm. people money, your qual- your the environment at which you work at has a significant impact on the quality of work that you do. Mm -hmm. Right. And I I believe we covered it last episode. It was Jen O'Neill who recently stepped down from Blizzard. Uh, It came out that she was basically like, she had been harassed and she just feels like leadership cannot make any kind of change to the overall work culture. She was literally like, this place is Unfixable. It's <laughs> unfixable. <laughs> and I don't want to be the face of. Yeah. It, she yeah. pretty much confirmed they just made her like one of the co leaders because she's a woman. Yep. That, that's basically how it read. Mm-hmm. 
And that's what, yeah, that's pretty much what she's like, read between the lines. This is like exactly what's going on. Like exactly what everyone said at the start. That's exactly what's happening. Yep. And, and, they're I'm making... not gonna, and I'm not going to have any part of it and I'm leaving and I'm going to yeah. actually do something to help people like this. Yep. She's saying that everyone higher up is just not doing anything to actually remedy this situation at all or take steps towards making it a work, better workplace. But Alex, so, what if I told you that Bobby is very committed to making this place? Oh my God. Have you place. seen that? Like internal video that's released i didn't him. see that i just read the the press release oh, that they it's released. like a oh, david lynch horror film or something he's oh, just like God. staring into my soul <laughs> it, and at the end it just like fades into black i'll have to try and find it after because <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's wild that he released it like I, somebody i just always found it that. wild that a ceo of a video game company makes a salary of 157 million dollars a year yeah I mean, cut cool. his salary, right? Smile. Oh, just that's think, right. Yeah. Think about it. He's just working like 7,000 times harder than his average employee. It's He's just the hardworking guy. He pulled himself up by his bootstraps. That's exactly. how capitalism works, baby. And if you yell at him, he'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, he can. Uh, he's rich enough to where he can just hire, oh, God. hire a hit out on you if he wants to. Did you see oh. that part of the thing, Alex? The thing where, for, like, it was like a while ago, right? Mm. It was like 15 years ago, but someone was like, there was some accusation against him and then, or he, like with a secretary or something, an assistant yes. or something. And he mm-hmm. literally like told him like, apparently as a joke, but he's like, I'll kill you. Yeah. He apparently regrets the tone he used. He sold to lawyer like right after he sent the message. So, hey, know. am I allowed to tell people like I'll kill them? Wait, he sent him, he wrote it? I think it was implied that it was like a phone message or something. Oh my God. No, that was, okay. oh, that yeah. The, did you see the other thing? That I came might out not have been the message that they sent out like a month or two ago was written by Bobby Kotick, but he mm. sent it to the senior man to one of the senior leaders in the company who's a female and had them send it have his message that he wrote <laughs> had her send it out under her name. Oh, good. and it just came out that that happened, and it was oh, like, God, oh, nice. No. He, I I forgot one thing from what mm. you've been playing. Okay. And I think I alluded to it. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yep. I played Call of Duty Vanguard. Context. Right. Yeah. I have bought every single Call of Duty since, like, Call of Duty Ghosts. Yeah, which... you've been a, you're, you're a big Codhead. We know yeah. that. Big yeah, Codhead. a co- Codhead or Codicad or whatever you call it. <laughs> Alex and I are, like, the complete opposite. The last Call of Duty I bought was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare 1. I had a moment of weakness, though. I did buy Modern Warfare. And I was like, That's oh, true. I mean, that was a good it one. Was fun. I, it was fun yeah. for a little while. Yeah. So, after... I, I broke my promise. After I said I will not buy it, I woke up on a Saturday morning, and I was like, you know what? I just want to play Zombies, so I bought Vanguard. I played 20 minutes of uh, of Zombies... I played 10 minutes of multiplayer, and me, Tristan Jung, a COD head. It was that, is that the right term? Yeah. Wait, COD wait, head. here's a, I need a clarifying, or oh, keep going, I'll ask it after. I literally requested a refund before my credit card payment even got <laughs> through, like, it, before it was even posted, and, like, Activision had to do some special thing to refund my money. This is the first Call of Duty game I was just like, I, this is garbage. Okay, now here's my question. Is there a battle pass for that game? Nah. Oh, of course. There's always a battle oh pass. My no, no. Yeah. The that, battle that's, pass. There was like a day one battle that's, pass. That's yeah. the, the sin right there. It it yeah. had about it had a battle pass and Tristan stepped away from it. Yeah. I, they've gone, I they've did gone a, too far. They've gone too far. I did a I did a seven twenty and walked right away. Yeah, I've watched a little bit of gameplay footage of it in multiplayer and I don't know. It's more of the same. It's just, uh, you know, they keep, keep trying to do the modern warfare thing, it feels like. Alex, they don't have any more wars to cover, okay? They got- <laughs> it is, and it's just... They've gone back, they've made up wars, they have no more wars. They've yeah, it's, the it's just a really poor reskin of modern warfare, where they're just trying to capture that magic again. It's just the same stuff. And I guess that reminds me, too, because uh, Battlefield's doing it as well, where you just have to grind shit out. Like, grind, 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 it feels mm-hmm. like. And that's for guns, especially in Battlefield, uh, where you have to get, like, a X number of kills to get attachments for your guns. Yeah. And that's the same thing in that, that COD Modern Warfare especially did, where you guys have to grind forever to get attachments for weapons. Here's the new grind vector 
mm. in the Call of Duty games, which is the fact that all the new Call of Duty games are tied with Warzone now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. th- you have the operators, you have the gun skins, and there's like a billion missions that, or not missions, but like uh, achievements that you have to get. Mm hmm. To get the new operators in Warzone, so you can right, play them yeah. in both Warzone and the new Call of Duty, it it takes so long. Yeah, and that's been the big thing is like I don't know what's happened where we're just like we got to have the numbers go up, get the dopamine going to really play these video games, and it just feels like an absolute job at this point a lot of the time to play them. I don't know, maybe that's just me being a grouchy old gamer at this point. I just want my content and go and have fun. The funny thing is that. For 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 years now, people of maybe even decades at this point have been wondering, what's the game that's going to kill COD? And the answer was COD itself, because the game that <laughs> the game that COD players won't stop playing is Warzone. That's uh-huh. the only COD they'll play now. So it's almost like Warzone killed its like itself. To be honest, like objectively speaking, Warzone is pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And no one really wants to play anything else. I mean, the other, the other new stuff that I've been coming out is pretty bad. Oh, mm-hmm. with Warzone? No, or, even or without War... Like, like yeah. Vanguard multiplayer is yeah, pretty Cold, bad. Cold War and Vanguard were both generally panned in terms of multiplayer. Yeah, interesting. I don't know what the scores were looking like, though, for the overall reviews or anything. I it was in the mid-70s. Really it's kind of where it always floats around. Okay. I mean, critically, it's like, it's the same game, so it kind of does the, <laughs> the same. Yeah, if the you same like beats. COD, you'll play this one, I guess. Yep. Okay. I, uh, I F5'd. Bobby Kotick hasn't resigned yet. So okay, as okay. of, uh, Not Tuesday, news, yeah. Bets Tuesday right 1040 now. EST. Bets right now. Uh-huh. Yes or no. By the next recording, Bobby Kotick will be the CEO of Activision. I I gotta go with what what you say, Albert. I feel like you, you got the you got the best uh, pulse on this. You know, I think I saw it today that the board is still standing with him. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say he's not. I feel he's staying. I I don't think I am pessimist. I don't think they'll remove him. He's too Mo- good of a money maker, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Over anything, money money trumps morality. Yep. Yep, it's profits, that's it. But are that's, you making money have. when your stock is down 20% in the past year? Or like 15%? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, as long as, I, long I as you keep releasing a, the best-selling game every year, does it well, matter? Well, to be honest, I heard Vanguard didn't sell that well. Mm. That'd be interesting if it actually has dipped that much. Because it might be selling less, but I mean, Call of Duty games sell demonstrably more than everything else so even if it dips and it it could still be the most sold here's the thing so i just looked this up uh from a very you know non-reliable source right yeah but um kind of scant source they said vanguard sold 26 percent fewer copies in physical and 44 percent less sales in digital hmm over cold war or um one second yeah what what is this great question um (laughs) they said uh vanguard has sold roughly one third fewer copies than cold war okay okay wow okay That's, that's pretty significant i mean i assume a large part of that stock dip is due to the fact that blizzard half their company is like on fire right now oh yeah definitely yeah everything's been pushed out at least a year or something yep so yeah development is slow to a crawl for that studio i don't know it's uh it's gonna be interesting to watch how this scenario plays out yeah it's i i, I think in wow. in my gut it's telling me he won't leave just because he's arrogant um and like you know they're still making money yeah but mm-hmm. yeah i think it's a it's an inflection point i i i this think is it, it is if this doesn't cause it he'll never he'll never he'll never leave yeah, I, I feel this will kind of set the tone and almost like a precedent for how things will go going forward in terms of uh, labor momentum and things like that, trying to get big changes in the workplace for at least game studios. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do some last minute headlines. 
Uh, this one's Tristan's headline here. Forza Horizon 5 officially the largest launch of any Xbox Game Studios title ever. Huge, huge shout out to Playground Games. You getting like, chill, are you getting paid by them? I, too? Dude, there's so much shilling going on this episode. We mm-hmm. had Power Wash Simulator. We had, I don't know what I shilled. Alex shilled something for a second. I just didn't comment. Um, I, I saw a comment saying, for, like, we finally have a driving game in the AAA trending game realm for the first time in forever. Because Forza yeah. Horizon 5 mm-hmm. is a really fun game that caters to both casual gamers and hardcore driver game simulator players. Mm-hmm. Here's a random question. Does Grand Tur- does the next Gran Turismo have to be really good to stand a chance? Here's my take. I think they're targeting two different segments. Like, the general mass that plays Forza Horizon 5 is actually not going to play Gran Turismo 7. Because Gran Turismo 7 is supposed to be like a real driving simulator. That game is really hard. Yeah, more grounded. Whereas, I feel like Forza Horizon 5, it's almost like, partly, almost like a spectacle. I, I, I'd almost like it, liken it to like the spectacle fighter of like Devil May Cry or something. But it's a racing game genre. Of the racing game genre. It's like an arcade driving game. Like, mm. I really mm-hmm. hate to go back to shooters for a second. But it's like... Battlefield is Gran Turismo, uh, although Battlefield's not really real- realistic either. Um, Arma is Arma, Gran Turismo. Okay. Arma or Squad, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Call of Duty is Forza Horizon. Okay. Call, Call of Duty is Mario Kart. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Mario Kart where it's like insane, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's still grounded a bit, but yeah, it's got like, you know, fun drifting and stuff. You don't I thought, you just, like I thought you just meant about like the audience, technical. like the intended audience of these games. Yeah, b- because like part of Forza is that they have all real cars, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I want to drive a BMW M series and that's in the game. Whereas, yeah, so you can still be a big gearhead and still enjoy the game. Yeah, because yeah, when once you get into the nitty gritty de- details, you can like fine-tune your cars on mm-hmm. where the gift shifts happen or you know all, all the little upgrades that you can do your, to do to your cars so i feel like there's like a good spectrum of uh gamers that it appeals to you can also download weep skins which is pretty cool you know i have purposely not posted any pictures of those things because mm. i knew somebody was gonna comment i already well I, I've he seen got them. you covered man yeah, yeah. <laughs> too late okay Oh, my, my meme joke was what other Xbox Game Studio title in the past three years would even come close to this? Halo Infinite? Yeah, to in be a few honest, weeks. It, it's going to be a Halo. few weeks, but it's like before that, Halo. right? What what else was there? Yeah, I think that's the big story is like, yeah, there hasn't been many huge Xbox Studios games yet. Yeah. Starfield. Returnal. Starfield. Wait, Returnal Starfield. was an Xbox? Returnal was PS5, No, right? Returnal was... Oh, House that's Marquee. PS5. House, what am I doing? Yeah, that's Marquee, too. Not even mm-hmm. a PlayStation studio. Or no, didn't they get bought? I forget. Yeah, they, they just got, got, they they got, got bought, bought afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I even played on my Xbox. I played Forza Horizon 4. Which yeah, you was, did. Uh... Or you tried. <laughs> you try. It took you forever, oh, but you eventually got it. Anyways, mm-hmm. let's wrap it up. We're running long. Let's do one last quick thing. Uh, you want to talk about this? There's not even really anything to talk about. Steam Deck delayed by two months. I'm sad. That's it. Yeah, you were like first batch. I was first mm-hmm. batch. I was going to play it on the holidays when I couldn't play anything else, but now I guess I'll just sit in a corner and cry. Delay the holidays. Delay That's the only option. By two months. I like it. And then hot off uh, out of Japan, you know, uh, apparently Crystal Dynamics was not the best choice for Avengers coming out of <laughs> That was uh, funny. <laughs> that was just funny. We're like. Off the release of D- Guardians of the Galaxy, and that one's actually kind of. I-, I think it's getting. Kind of positively. It's got nom- it got it nominated, got nominated for like, so many times. For like six yeah. or seven categories of the game. I, I've heard generally positive things about it. So, and then yeah, Avengers is off in the corner crying. So yeah, it, it was that, that's all I like, to say about it. It was like they came out and said it was the wrong fit, and it's like, bro, mm-hmm. we know <laughs> we've been yeah, telling you this <laughs> since the first People trailer knew basically dropped. Release day. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. Any last minute thoughts? Any last minute games you remember that you played? Let's not go back there. That's too much. It's too much. 
I'm just going to title this What You've Been Playing. Yeah. I've... What We've Been Playing. Yeah. Or you it's could call a... it We Would Like to Play. Don't it's call been it a that. good and bad season to be a gamer, I guess. It's had its ups and downs. To oh, be honest. I didn't get into the Elden Ring Network test thing. That made oh, me sad. Yeah. Did oh. either of you jump into that at all? No. I didn't, no. I didn't get selected. Okay. I... But I'm like gonna pl- I'm gonna play that game when it comes out. That game's gonna be no. amazing. I, I watched some streams of it. it looked pretty solid. I was gonna like say Elden I don't like Elden Ring, but oh yeah, you heard me. Whoa. Why don't you like it? I I just don't. I'm like really bad at Souls games. Have you ever played one? Yeah, for like more than an hour. Yeah, Bloodborne. I bought it. How much did you play it for? A few hours. I got past the first two bosses, and I was like, I just gave up. I was like, this is too hard. Okay. Okay. Little 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 wow wow baby over here. Yeah, he's <laughs> a wow, wow, baby. baby casual gamer, I guess. Yeah. Not not ready for Miyazaki's vision. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Anyways, that wraps it up for episode eighty two of Viewport Relay. Viewport Relay is available on Radio Public, iTunes, Google Music, Stitcher, Podbean, and all your favorite podcast directories. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to subscribe, review, and share it with your friends. We're also on social media as Viewport Gaming on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. But Tristan, why Viewport Gaming? Well, Viewport Relay is part of Viewport Gaming, a website that provides a look into video games through reviews, features, and podcasts. Just want to note that the last episode of Loading Screen is releasing next week. Last episode of Season 1, we're going to interview D-Cell Games about their newest rhythm game, Unbeatable. So check that out. You can also find all other Viewport Gaming content at viewportgaming.com. Thank you, Tristan. And as always, I've been your host, Albert Corson, joined by Tristan John. Goodbye. And Alex Nestor. See you next time.